Okay, get us some treats. <laughs> oh, so my okay. Okay. Hello, are you there? Am I on? We just drove up and I looked at the clock and it said 10 o'clock. And here we are again in the parking lot of Sprouts, Sacramento. We just drove through the beautiful land park area to get here. It's not as close as Sprouts used to be, but the drive is absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's, well, here I am. I made it. Hope you're doing okay. I'm trying to set up my little camera here through my steering wheel. Uh, a couple years ago, uh, the good folks at Weiser, uh, uh, my main publisher, uh, wanted me to contribute a little uh, uh, periodic blog uh, for their, their website. And uh, I said, sure. And uh, I don't know whatever became of that program, but uh, uh, I wrote this, this uh, uh, written, it's a written blog, not a, not a, a visual blog. But anyway, I, I wrote this and I uh, just ran across it the other day and uh, what, what struck me is uh, one little line from it uh, has been snipped and used uh, and quoted over and over again. Uh, on the, there's various websites that, that have 10 best quotes from Lon Duquette, 10 best quotes from, you know, Charles Manson, 10 best, <laughs> 10 best quotes uh, from... Uh, you know, whoever you know and uh, but in some of the 10 best or 20 best quotes from Lon Duquette was a little snippet one line from uh, from this thing in it so it reminded me uh, gee uh, it's never been uh, uh, published in any other form but uh, this and that one quote so I'm going to read it it's very it's very short but we don't have that much time this morning anyway so it's called Who's Your Muse? And I called it a, a Baba blog for mystical writers from Lon Milo Duquette, author of, and then I plug a bunch of books, especially those from Weiser. Okay. I bet you've always felt special, haven't you? Be honest with yourself. I'd wager that even as a child, you were haunted by the uneasy feeling that you were different from everyone else around you. You probably felt and still feel profoundly alone with a host of naughty feelings and secret fears and disturbing dreams and curious passions and desires that are uniquely yours and yours alone. Compared to everyone else, you might consider yourself quietly odd, different, perhaps even defective or incomplete. Nevertheless, even though all of us to one degree or another secretly believe ourselves to be profoundly and fundamentally flawed, we simultaneously believe we are the most special, most interesting, most fascinating person in the universe. The superstar of our own movie. The protagonist of our own novel. The most important actor in the great drama of existence. Am I right? Don't worry if your answer is yes. You're probably not too crazy, and you certainly are not alone in your megalomania. 
because everyone feels that way, and with good reason, because it's true. Each of us is special. Each of us is defective. Each of us is supremely unique and important. In truth, each of us is the center of the universe, the perfect reflection and focus of the supreme consciousness that is the source and expression of existence and being. Each of us is the perfect epicenter of the mind of God. Most of the world's population doesn't give this positioning a moment's thought. But for the writer, this is the best seat in the house. When a writer sits down to write, he or she seizes their birthright and consciously observes life from this central vantage point of consciousness. And then converts those observations into words. Once on paper, the words become nothing less than a, a written confession, the voice of our own self-awareness, however flawed and distorted it may be. As an artist, the writer speaks because he or she must. But who or what is the ear that hears. Who's the audience? If a tree falls in the woods, is there no one to hear it? Does it make a sound? Theoretically, when we gain enlightenment, we'll all realize that we are both the voice and the ear. But until that epiphany comes upon us, until the scintillating instant just before we sizzle blissfully into limitless Godhead, we will need to think of the writing process as if there is someone actually speaking our words and someone actually listening. Someone worshiping and someone being worshiped. Someone loving and adoring, and someone being loved and adored. For the artist, for the writer, that someone is our muse. No one can define the muse for another person. The idea, at least in my mind, is akin to the concept of the highly personal spiritual being known to the students of the Western Mysteries as the Holy Guardian Angel. Whatever you might choose to call it, the muse is the god or goddess we pray to, the lover we wish to move with our poetry or songs, the beloved who inspires us, and the target we need to inspire. The secret, therefore, to finding our muse lies in our ability to fall hopelessly in love. In fact, lovers, past, present, would-be, or fantasy, already are the perfect stand-in for your muse. As you sit there writing your next masterpiece, you, you might think to yourself, I wonder if old, and then insert an old girlfriend or boyfriend's name here, I wonder if old what's-her-name would think my book is funny or wise or inspiring or irresistibly witty. The muse can be as real or imaginary as you need it to be. Nothing is too corny when it comes to muses. Don't be afraid to reach back in time to mushy adolescent moments, re-wooing high school sweethearts, summer loves, or hunky firemen with your writer's wit and brilliance. Of course, this process is 
blushingly personal and painfully private and attaches itself uncomfortably to all manner of other sticky psychological issues that make of the complex and colorful uniqueness that is you. For example, if mom and dad were alive, I'd show them. <laughs> but to tell you the truth, finding your muse is not something you need to overthink. Your muse is with you right now. You need only whisper something truthful from your heart and notice who listens. And that is my Baba blog for mystical writers. Uh, now, now that I think of it, uh, I may have misspoke at first and uh, said it was uh, uh, a program mounted by uh, my publisher Weiser, but in uh, as I muse on that thought, it might have been my my other major publisher, uh, Lew Llewellyn. In any case, I apologize to one or the <laughs> the other, uh, and thank them for giving me the initial opportunity to uh, to write that and share it with you. So. I think that's it for today. It's one of these parking lot days, and uh, uh, I want to get back in before it starts raining. And and uh, so, until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will. Bye.